Finland is going to the new mission tree. Same as our favorite Lübeck and new Hans ideas. There'll be new UI for the estates, as well as change to theocracy and Pope gallantry forms. A lot of changes coming in today's dev diary for you for but worry do not, I'm Slavic and I'm gonna summarize everything in just around 10 minutes. To stay up to date with the EU4 Dev Diaries as well as all the other content, remember to subscribe to the channel right now. First important information, Finland mission tree will be part of the DLC, while the Lübeck tree from Emperor will be shared with Hamburg and Bremen, while the new mission tree presented today will be part of the new DLC. So this as Finland did not do that much in the time period of EU4, its mission tree is mostly a what if mission tree, same as we've seen for the other Baltic nations. This is all that is coming 15 different missions, leading us to the White Dev mission. So, the whole goal of these missions is to dominate the Baltic Sea and ideally form Scandinavia. To do that, we can get temporal military bonuses as well as special mercs unique Hakapalita cavalry that costs a lot, but at the same time, they do not take army professionals when being recruited. I don't want to go too deeply into these missions, but they are really nice set of creating a strong nation in Scandinavia, uniting the region and making it very tall. Reaching the last mission, the White Death, is giving us the permanent bonus to attrition to enemies plus 2, 20% for the defense and combat bonus on the terrain of the capital, which are very strong bonuses and I love them. What's important once you form Scandinavia, of course if you want to do that as Finland, you're getting the basic Scandinavian mission tree, nothing special like for Sweden or Norway. Now, expansion of the Lübeck mission tree. So this mission tree will be mainly about dominating Northern European and European in general trade, getting everything to Lübeck, making it one big stonks, not only getting back to the good old days of the Hansa, but also creating the new golden era of it. What's important, and I'll tell it probably on the every single development diary, great approach, because it's not like forcing players to do one path of the mission, but again, you can choose to complete the mission military way by conquest or diplomatic way. So it's of course getting to Riga, getting to Visby, so to Gotland, and once you get Visby, you're gonna go and get the hands in town of Visby, <laughs> a long event that is giving you construction cost, local trade power in Visby, as well as money for everyone in the Trail League. Once you get the Danzig, you get the even Danzig Confederation, which is allowing you to get either the global trade power and mercantilism or Republican tradition and mercantilism. So either a long-term bonus or a short-term bonus. This is, I think, the most interesting part of the Lübeck mission, at least from this that are shot in the development diary. So once you finish your conquest path, you can choose your war minister for 30 years. And depending on your advisor, you can get one of these bonuses. So more of armies, land force limit, Discipline, I think it should be the same balance between morale and discipline as like everywhere else, so 5 and 10, not 5 and 15. If you want to make it 15, maybe make it 7.5, but I would rather go in with 10 here. Reinforce speed and reinforce cost, manpower, land maintenance and regiment costs. I think 5% regiment costs is too little compared to the other bonuses, I would make it far bigger. And finally, the last one, the fourth defense. Maybe also at the fourth cost, so it's gonna be actually competing with these bonuses. Second part of the tree is dedicated to the eternal affairs, so embracing the stocks. You can see the trade efficiency, institution spread, Luca Pacchioli, that's gonna be a cheap advisor, 70% cheaper, building the ships, getting Lipovican tradition and the Tom Hall of Lübeck, that is advisor cost, reform progress growth and innovativeness for 25 years. More Republican tradition, a re-election cost, production efficiency for Lübeck, trade value modifier, that's very nice, a death cost, possible buildings, transfer trade power acceptance, yes, that is perfect from the Hansa gameplay. Developing the mineral trade in Europe has quite a spicy word that will, just like its predecessors, change depending on the circumstances of... Okay, so you can get a different bonus here depending on like how you're gonna complete it. So for example, it's development and you can get gold production in Lübeck. Gold production for Lübeck 
and Perma modifier for local gold depletion chance modifier minus 25%. Find the Queen of the Hands as one of the lower missions. It's pretty overpowered because all of the members of your trade league will become your vassals with a bonus to the amount of the relations so you will not go over the limit. At the same time the crowning of the new queen so the event that you get with this mission is giving you one of the two bonuses that you can choose. So either you form the Hansa and get the new ideas or you keep your ideas and get additional bonuses to your real stats. So what are the Hansa ideas? Uh, it's another embrace the stonks. It's trade efficiency, more merchants, trade steering, global trade power, ship trade power, ship cost, discipline, heavy ship combat ability, good spruce modifier, dev cost, idea cost, and provision trade parts. Everything for the perfect Hansa roleplay. More trade, more tall gameplay. What's mentioned over here is that we covered only part of the Lübeck mission tree because it's huge, so expect even more for the perfect Hansa gameplay. I think I, I might consider it one of my first campaigns in the new patch. And moving further, we're gonna have a new UI for the states. Previous UI was already not perfect and many mods were changing it. One of these mods that did that, and big shout out to it, UI bar Artemis, I was using this for a couple of months, was an inspiration for the new UI in the base game. So right now we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six slots and I think it means that also we're gonna be able to pick up to six privileges right now in the new patch which was already mentioned in the past dev diaries. Final part of this dev diary are the democratic government reforms and there are a lot of them so I'm gonna only cover the most important parts to not go too deep. Just look at this screenshot. Tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, tier 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 tiers and many of these reforms weren't here before. I absolutely love that and as mentioned already in the past, I love this approach because instead of just choice of 2 reforms and 6 tiers, right now we have tons of choice and you can structureize your country based on what guarantee reforms you are taking. From the interesting reforms is education of the theocrat, new rule trigger and education for the future heir, so it's average monarch lifespan and an event where you can choose what power your future heir is gonna receive additional, it's gonna be diplomatic, administrative or military. What's interesting, Kingdom of God reform is going to tier 3 right now and is getting additional bonuses to actually compete with the other new reforms here. Through those full pumps will be able to become the generals since now with this guarantee form. This is it for today's dev diary. Next week we are gonna see more about the AI changes and adjustments coming with 1.34 free patch and I'm really interested how it's gonna go and hopefully also the topic of the changes to warfare we brought again because there was some time and they got a lot of feedback since the last dev diary about it. Anyway for today that's gonna be it. If you do enjoy dev diary videos and would like to get more in the future remember to leave a like on this video and tell me in comments what you think about today's dev diary. Thank you so much remember to subscribe to the channel to get notified about the future videos and I'm gonna see you very soon.